Do you want to welcome the President of the United States and thank him for the outstanding government he's provided? Thank you for your enthusiastic welcome and thanks to balance distinct. Yes, states. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. You know, one of the things that goes with my job is that I am Commander-in-Chief. And in the military, a general can dictate the uniform of the day. And in view of the temperature, I'm declaring that the uniform of the day Now, now before, before I get into my remarks, I have, if you'll just wait just a second, I have something of a news announcement I would like to make that in case you haven't heard it already, that at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock Central Time, a Lufthansa airline liner left Moscow, bound for Frankfurt, West Germany, and on board are Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas Danilov. Let me just say it's wonderful to be here in Missouri and it's great to be back on the campaign trail. It almost feels like 1980 all over again. You know, as I said to my staff when we were taking off in Air Force One, it's great to be out of Washington and back where the real people are. Would you make you make a fella feel mighty welcome. I wish I could stay longer, but as you know, Congress is in session, and so a number of individuals that right now I would be mentioning by name, your Senator Jack Danforth, some of your congressmen had to change their plans and remain in Washington because the Congress is in session and somebody's got to keep an eye on them. Here. You know, some of the people in charge in the Congress in Washington and the other side, they remind me of a story about three, they're sort of like the three fellows that came out of a building, they found they'd locked themselves out of their automobile. And one of them said, get me a wire coat, or ha coat hanger. I can straighten it out and I can get in, open the door. And the second one says, you can't do that. Somebody think you're stealing the car. And the third one said, well, we better do something pretty quick because it's starting to rain and the top's down. <laughs> it is really great to be here and wonderful to see a lot of old friends and supporters. And as I said, I'm sorry that Jack Danforth 
one of the ablest senators we've got, and your tremendous group of representatives, Tom Coleman, Bill Emerson, and Gene Taylor. I call them Missouri's A-team. They're back there, hard at it. Having been governor myself for some time, I think I recognize good material when I see it, and John Ashcroft is the best. You know, I couldn't be paying him a higher compliment when I say he is a worthy successor to Kit Bond, who was a great governor. There's a good candidate for governor in your neighboring state, Kansas, who was going to be here, but he's out busy campaigning, Mike Hayden. He was raised on a farm. He's a highly decorated Vietnam War veteran. Mike has the kind of experience that'll make him a strong leader as governor of the Sunflower State. And while we're talking about people to be proud of, there's one right here on the platform, Captain John Testrake, TWA pilot, who was the pilot of that plane and performed so heroically in Lebanon last summer when they were holding our people hostages. And now all of that brings me to today's star and one of America's all-star candidates for 1986. A man of proven ability, one of the ablest leaders in government today. I'm talking about the next United States Senator from the great state of Missouri, Kit Bond. <laughs> Believe me, we need Kit in Washington to help work the same kind of magic in Congress that he did here in your state capitol. We need Kit Bond of the United States Senate to stand up to the liberal big spenders and their tax hike schemes and keep America on the track of growth, prosperity, and freedom. It's no secret that there are still some folks in Washington who want to put America full speed in reverse back to the days when big government, taxes, and inflation were destroying our economy. And military weakness made America a punching bag for nickel and dime dictators around the world. America used to wear, a few years ago, a kick me sign around its neck. Well, we threw that sign away, and now it reads, don't tread on me. It's important to remember those days five and a half years ago because the tax and tax spend and spend crew is still lurking in the shadows, just waiting for a second chance. The liberal leadership of the Democratic Party hasn't changed. They're just itching to raise your taxes and rev up that inflationary money machine. You know, they remind me of the preacher who traveled to a nearby town away from his own parish for a revival meeting. And he stopped as he was going by the general store in that strange town. He saw a familiar face, a fellow from his own hometown. He was sitting there in front of the grocery store. He was a man that was known for his drinking. And when the preacher asked him what he was doing there, he explained, well, Reverend, beer is five cents a bottle cheaper here. Well, the preacher asked him what sense that made, considering the cost of travel and all. And the man replied, Reverend, I'm not stupid. I just sit here and drink till I show a profit. <laughs> you know, when I hear some of the things that Kit's opponent is saying, I sometimes think the liberal democratic leadership will never change its big spending high tax ways. But then, as I've always said, you don't have to make them see the light. Just make them feel the heat. So
So let's, let's make them feel the heat on election day. You know, this 1986 election will be a crucial moment of decision for our country. Will liberal policies return us to the days of malaise? You'll remember five and a half years ago when Washington told us that we were suffering from a malaise. We were responsible for the economy, what had happened. Well, or will America continue down the road of progress? The answer to that question depends almost entirely on one thing, electing senators who are pro-growth, pro-defense, and pro-America. It means sending someone to Washington who will work together with me to keep America moving some forward, someone like Kit Bond. <laughs> Kit has a proven record as governor battling at the state level to bring America back. And I've said it a few times before, but I think it's worth repeating. America is back. And with Kit's help in the United States Senate, we're going to keep her standing, tall and proud and free. Yes, America is once again united in hope and strong in purpose. We've squashed inflation. We're keeping the doors of the Opportunity Society wide open by cutting tax rates still further and spurring on the economic expansion that has already created about 11 and a half million new jobs. Today, employment is at a record high. And as Kit told you, no place higher than right here in Missouri. But let me give you a figure. If you can just visualize all the Americans in the United States, male and female, from age 16 all the way up and out past retirement age, all living Americans in that group, 61.3% of them today are employed, and that's the highest percentage in our nation's history. <laughs> Some sectors, such as agriculture, are still hurting. That's why this administration is providing more help to our nation's farmers than the last five administrations all put together. But money alone is not the answer. Farmers don't want more government programs. They want more profits. And that's why we need Kit Bond in the Senate, to keep those interest rates coming down and keep foreign markets open to our agricultural exports. We don't need a liberal in there creating more problems. We need a problem solver like Kit Bond creating jobs and prosperity. <laughs> and we need Kit in the Senate so we can keep rebuilding our defenses, speaking out loudly and clearly for human liberty, and working around the world for freedom and democracy. You know, of all the things that go with this job of mine, I'm most proud of our young men and women in uniform, in the military uniform, than of anything else. They're all volunteers, and they have the highest level of education in the history of the military. A few years ago, only 54% of our military had a high school diploma. Well, last year, it had reached 91%. They're one fine bunch. And let me say this. If we must ever ask our military to personnel to put their lives on the line for us, we're not going to give them anything less than the top quality, best equipment they need to get the job done and come home safely. You know, there's some people that have been calling me a super patriot, and they don't mean that in a flattering sense. Uh, they are kind of complaining. Well, maybe I'm a little old-fashioned, but I don't think you can love America too much. <laughs> you know, there was a great Broadway star some few years ago, George M. Cohan. 
And he used to say people would tease him and call him a flag waver because so many of his shows had the flag and patriotism in it. And he said, sure, I'm a flag waver. But tell me this, can you think of a better flag to wave? Now, we've come a long way since those days of malaise, but the next couple of years will decide whether all our progress since 1980 will be set in concrete or only written in the sand. Kit's election could very well decide whether we keep control of the Senate or lose it to the liberal leadership of the Democratic Party. And that's the difference between two more years of progress or two years of paralysis. We could not have accomplished what we have if we did not have that slim majority in the United States Senate. The other party has, con has controlled both houses of the Congress for almost 50 years. And now, for five and a half years, we have controlled the one. I didn't seek re-election to be a six-year president. There are too many exciting challenges before us, too much business that still must be completed. I cannot, I will not, have my hands tied by a Congress that is totally hostile to all we're trying to do. <laughs> you know, I guess my name will never be on the ballot again, but you can vote for me in a way, if you'd like. If you want to vote for me, vote for Kit Bond, so that we can have a Republican Senate that I can work with instead of against me, and they'll be around after I'm gone. And you know, it's time the people of Missouri got the straight facts about Kit's opponent. Missouri doesn't need a senator like Kit's opponent, whose voting record in the state legislature has been rated 100% by the ultra-liberal ADA. A tax-and-spend Democrat whose votes helped push this state's budget out of balance and who now wants to go to Washington to continue her free spending ways. This state doesn't need a senator like Kit's opponent who wants to raise your taxes and slash defense. You don't need a senator who opposes the balanced budget amendment, the line item veto, and Graham-Rudman deficit reduction. And then when she's asked how she's going to reduce the deficit, she says, well, you can trust her to get the job done. Someone should tell her this isn't the trust me state, this is the show me state. Missouri needs a senator like Kit Bond, who as governor created thousands of jobs, held the line against taxes, and transformed a liberal-induced deficit into a budget surplus. Missouri needs a, sen a senator who will fight against a tax increase, a man who knows how to give America more growth, not more government. Missouri needs Kit Bond, and America needs Kit Bond. But let me give you a for instance. Let me give you just one example of the difference that Kit could make in the Senate. The great majority of Missourians, we know from the polls, favor the balanced budget amendment, a constitutional amendment that will say to the government in Washington, you have to balance the budget. Forty-three states, I think, have that already. Well, earlier this year, that amendment lost by one vote in the Senate. One Missouri Senator, Jack Danforth, voted for it. The other Missouri Senator voted against it. If you agree with Jack, why send someone to Washington who will cancel his vote? Elect Kit Bond so that America can have a balanced budget amendment. Now, maybe you've noticed that I've been careful to refer to the liberal leadership of the Democratic Party. 
That's because I believe that the liberals who've taken control of that once great party don't represent the vast majority of hardworking patriotic Democrats that can be found throughout America. Imagine, you know, I'm sure that in a crowd like this, there have to be some. And I'm sure also that there have to be some who were Democrats and, like me, have seen fit to change. Imagine if that great Missourian Harry Truman were here today, what he'd think. This was the man who battled back communist aggression in Korea and whose timely aid saved Greece and possibly much of Europe from communist enslavement. What would he say about a party who sees the Soviets building another fortress Cuba on the American mainland and won't even lift a finger to stop it? You can bet that whatever he had to say would have been unprintable. <laughs> but you'd have understood what he was saying. As I say, I know I couldn't address a crowd like this here without there being a number of Democrats present, and you're welcome. But I know how it, tough it can be to break with tradition. And I remember what Winston Churchill once said in the English Parliament when he changed parties as a member of the Parliament. He said, some men change principle for party, and some men change party for principle. <laughs> All I'm asking the people of Missouri is to remember that the governor, the representatives and senators that you elect will determine the future, your future, America's future. So before I go, let me just conduct an informal poll. Speak up loudly so that all Missouri can hear you. Do you want to go back to the days of big spending, high taxes, and runaway inflation? No! Do you want a weak and vacillating America? No! That's good to hear. Would you rather have low taxes, high growth, and millions of new jobs? Would you rather have an America that is strong and proud and free? Yeah. Now, this next one's a tough question. Do you want Kit Bond as the next senator from the great state of Missouri? Yeah. Thank you. You just made my day. And God bless you. Thank you all.